First, we're going to go with Swisher Scoops, which means it's time for the uh, the shades. And we're going to get Cara mine. Swisher coming, up, going, coming to us from California. She's got her shades on too. So we can continue now to talk about the irked investors who may be planning a board takeover at AOL. Tell us about this. Well, you know, it's been it's been long expected. Starboard Value, which is a very little known uh, activist fund, um, lobbed a letter to Tim Armstrong in December that was widely reported on asking for changes. He was, uh, the, the guy who runs it was sort of insulting the content strategy that's been the hallmark of Tim Armstrong, the CEO's uh, strategy, uh, and some other things, and some money losing ventures. And he felt like the value of just the dial-up business and uh, a smaller part of it valued the other content assets at zero. Very similar to Yahoo. It's a very similar situation where other assets, not their core business, is worth more than the market value. Wow. Um, so uh, is there there's a competing slate of, of directors. Is there any indication of who, who's on the slate? Um, well, they've been preparing it. They haven't been able, just as, as the investors uh, that are attacking Yahoo, Daniel Loeb at third point, they haven't been able to get internet people in on the action because internet people, sorry, it's my cat, um, don't <laughs> like to attack their own. Um, and so there, it's, a, it's a slate of investors and Wall Street types. Um, the slate at Yahoo was uh, Jeff Zucker was the most prominent person on the media type. Um, so I think they're going to go with uh, with a, a very investment kind of focus. Um, Yahoo's board is not very just like uh, I mean Yahoo's I'm sorry AOL's board just like Yahoo is not the the strongest in uh, in all the internet space. So it's vulnerable and we'll see if it strong. Well known for being diplomatic. And, uh, data. We, we seem to be losing you, Cara, uh, on the sound Sorry. front um, Sorry. a little Sorry. bit. Um, but uh, do carry on and tell us now, is this something that's long overdue? In your view, you watch Silicon Valley all the time and, 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 and companies like um, AOL. Long overdue? Well, it's not a surprise because the, money, the value of the company is so low. It's yeah. easy to take out. There's a lot of value there. There's mm. a lot of cash. There's all kinds of things. So, of course, investors will, a vulture kind of investors, and I don't mean to call them vulture, but it's a, it's a great investment opportunity to do something. Um, you know, the turnaround that Tim Armstrong has been promising has taken a long time. He's a very uh, honorable person, but, you know, the stock has been lagging until just recently with these rumors. Um, and so people wonder if he can really turn it around, uh, you know, with the strategy he has, which is very content heavy with Patch, which is a local uh, mm. effort, and, AO and uh, Huffington Post, uh, which people are wondering if that was the right decision for him. And so, you know, he's going in a definite direction compared to Yahoo, but it might not be the direction that yields what he needs uh, to have happen there. Uh, now, Eric, it, it's true, though, isn't it? The content is is a very tricky thing to get right. I mean, yeah, it, I it mean, is. there are many things to do, but but the content it's 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 it can be so easily so wrong, and it can also be very expensive. Yeah, and it's hard good to make it can be really expensive. Good content can be very expensive. It's hard to establish a sticky brand that people want to come back to, and that sort of thing. But the thing that always blows my mind about AOL stock, and Kara, jump in here, is that the dial-up business, the mid-90s vintage dial-up business, continues to be a going concern. What is that about? Yeah, well, no, of course it is. People are using it. I mean, it's it's a heart of AOL at the beginning. I've written two books on AOL, and that business, that they've been trying to get rid of it for years, but it actually is the reason it's relatively profitable. I mean, you know, they, Tim's not been able to make the display business as lucrative as the dial-up business, which tells you a lot here. It's not that, I, I think his, his strategy is really interesting. I just think the idea of uh, getting that display up as high as they need to, especially in a world where Google and Facebook and, and are competing to get those display dollars is really hard. And so, you know, I don't know if AOL is big enough. Yahoo, I wrote a story today about a Bill Maher event that, uh, that Yahoo did an exclusive show, and that worked out really well because it's huge. But the question is, can AOL, uh, on the smaller base of, of, of people, do that? And I have to say, I find the, the strategy interesting. Uh, investors, not so much. Okay, now they've got um, Huffington Post there, and that, that is a brand that a lot of people like. It, was that a, a good decision for, for Tim Armstrong to go and acquire Huffington Post on the content side? Will that be sticky? I know um, Huffington Post is going to expand into video, or that, at right. least that is the plans we're told about. Now, that's not, not necessarily um, an inexpensive venture. Depends how you do it, of course. But uh, what, what do you think of that? Well, you know, it's the way to go because premium video, uh, invest, uh, brands are, are dying for really good premium video. The question is, can they assemble an audience that will be able to pay for it? And that's the, that's the issue here is this, these areas are in their nascent stages. Even YouTubes, you know, they're creating channels. There's a lot of competition in the area. And the question is, 
can AOL last long enough to go down this road? I mean, and the well, did they pay too much for the Huffington Post too early? You know, how, how how is Tim getting along with Ariana? A lot of that's built around Ariana Huffington, which is you know, as you know, when you have you know uh, prominent editors, it's it's a difficult situation uh, because you know what what happens to that brand if she decides not to stay? All kinds of things. You know, they they bought several brands like that. And you saw what happened to Engadget, which is still a strong site, but all the editors left and started a competing one. So it's a, it's a very dicey business dealing with difficult uh, journalist people, for example, like difficult myself. Difficult journalist people. What can she mean, Eric? I don't <laughs> no, know. No, me. Me. I mean, me. I, I'm really difficult. It's just, really? I'd not, I'd not heard that, Cara. Anyway. Oh. Uh, thank you. By the way, so Simon, I have tattoos. I heard you talking about tattoos. Earlier. You do have tattoos. That's good. Oh, that's great. All things that's digital tattoo, tattoo, we understand. Oh, okay. And you have a, a lovely cat there, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, and bring though. the cat on the show yeah. next time. We'd love that. Thank you very much. Cara Swisher of All Things Digital out there bringing us the news with Swisher Scoop.